All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Now, I get com my books here get compared to John Gwynn more than any other author out there, especially... John Gwynn's Faithful in the Fallen series, a lot of people compare my Five Warrior Angels series to these books, and rightfully so. I read these books because people were comparing me so much to John Gwynn. I went ahead and read these books and left a review of these books elsewhere on my channel. You can find those reviews by just typing the title of the book and my last name, and the reviews will magically appear upon your screen. So you can see those reviews and how I compared my, sort of my series to his series and how much I enjoyed his series. Now I am reading his brand new series. I think this is book one in a trilogy. Let's talk about the cover first. You know I love covered graphic design and cover illustration, so we always check out the packaging of the books before anything else. This cover is absolutely spectacular. Just big, huge, the shadow of the gods right there. Big and bold in the white space, in the quiet space over here. Then we've got this massive dragon and this little fighter guy down here ready to fight this massive dragon. And the massive dragon wraps around onto the backside. And it's just so well done. The artist is someone named Marcus Winnie. First time I've heard of him, but this is a great cover. Marcus, you did a good job. And Orbit Books did a great job of packaging this up. We've got a um, nice map of our fantasy world in here. We're good to go. We're good to go. I'm going to tell you right now. I enjoyed this. As much as I loved these books, and I loved them a lot, if you watch my review, I liked this book a lot better a ton better. I absolutely adored everything about this book. This to me, this book to me, one of the things I did mention in the, my reviews of these books is John Gwynn, unlike me, I'm, I'm garrulous with my words. I use a lot of descriptive words. Every character that walks into my story gets a detailed description, all the way down to the color of their eyes and what they're wearing. Some of the characters now, it's a different stylistic choice, but not a lot of the characters in this series were ever described to us. We just kind of had to um, imagine them in our head as we wanted. That is not the case with this. In this book, John Gwynn does a absolutely marvelous job of describing each character. Small, small details, though. I mean, not paragraph after paragraph like I do, but small details about each character that just give you an idea of who they are, what they look like, what they're wearing, and I just think that it was done so perfectly. These bo this book is, if I can say anything, is a combination. It's a mix between Bernard Cornwell's Saxon Tales and pretty much everything that David Gemmell ever wrote. This is kind of a mashup of those two styles. The writing is that good in this. Because David Gemmell is, uh, is an impeccable writer. And so is Bernard Cornwell. Bernard Cornwell is just great. And this is a mashup of those two styles. It's kind of like the if, they, if those two writers were to have a baby, it would be this book. What is it about? It's very, very Norse mythology centered very much viking type gods are roaming through this in fact the gods are pretty simple to remember they're the snake the rat the wolf the bear the eagle the dragon i mean they're pretty the gods are pretty e easy to remember the the world building is pretty simple in that it's almost familiar to us because it's almost uh, sort of what um our ancient vikings lived you know, those sort of mythologies, that sort of landscape. That's what we're dealing with here. Starts out with Orca and her son Breca and her husband Thorkel. And they are out doing, you know, they're just out and about in the world 
and bad things happen to them, and Orca becomes a character that has to go on a quest. The mother of Brekka, the wife of Thorgal, she becomes one of the main characters and one of the main point of view characters, as she has to go on a quest of self-discovery herself, in almost in search of her family, is kind of the way that one is set up. Um, then we got another point of view character named Varg, who is a warrior, a young warrior seeking vengeance for his murdered sister, and um, he's he's part of a group of the I think it's the Blood Swarm or the Grim, the Battle Grim. I can't remember because Elvar, one of our other uh, main characters, is also a part of either the Blood Swarm or the or the Battle Grim. Any either way, both of those characters get point of views in this, and they are both great. It's kind of like they're both sort of stuck in these um, warrior-like societies as warriors, and they kind of got to also sort of, it's a quest of finding themselves, finding who they can trust, finding who they can't trust, knowing who their real family is, who, uh, is their real family their blood, their, their actual blood, or is their real family people that they choose to be, to hang out with? Um, it's kind of like a we all kind of go through that. And so it's relatable when you talk about uh, Varg and Elvar just trying to uh, navigate the, a bloody, grim world and not knowing who to trust, um, trying to find friends, trying to find themselves, trying to, get to, to achieve the quests that they're on. Um, and then at the end, we just get all of these characters and uh, storylines converge so beautifully at the end in some pretty grim, bloody um, ways, battle scenes. I mean, great battle scenes. Got to give John Gwynn credit for writing such vivid battle scenes that really take your breath away in so many different ways. Just the way they're written, the landscape they take place in, the characters that are involved in the skirmishes, and I don't want to get too involved in specific plot points of Orca, Varg, and Elvar, even though I kind of told you a little bit of plot point about Orca. She is on a search for her, I mean, Brekka and Thor, her husband Thorgal and her son Brekka. She has lost them, and she is in a search throughout this book for them. And I won't tell you whether she finds them, whether they die, whether they live, or what happens at the end, because I want to leave that a mystery to you. Um, but Varg and Elvar are, are also searching for things that are equally as important to them in their life, and we won't get into all that, but it's just so wonderful. Such a great story, and as much as I loved The Faithful and the Fallen, I just dug this so much more. I don't know, it was just written uh, for me. It was just like, like a fantasy written specifically for me. And all the things I like. And so I give this a solid 10 out of 10. It's just, it's one of the best fantasies, one of the best modern fantasies you're just going to ever pick up. And I can't wait for book two and three to see how it all turns out.